Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Brace for it. Med services warn as road conditions worsen in Jamaica. Reactions to 48-hour curfew imposed in Vineyard St. Elizabeth. And later in sports, World Athletics announces historic prize money for Olympics. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. Sections of the corporate area are currently blanketed with smoke following a massive fire at the Riverton Disposal Site in St. Andrew. Several schools and businesses are being affected. The fire started Monday afternoon. Up to Tuesday night, firefighters were still at the dump trying to extinguish the blaze. Executive Director of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Audley Gordon, says they're still working to clear the smoke. Loads and truck loads of cover material from the areas of the disposal site where we have our stockpile. We have enough heavy duty equipment and personnel from the Jamaica Fire Brigade with us and we will get the smoke nuisance under control. It may take us another 10-12 hours but we will get it under control because we are covering the area and we are doing it very fast. So I believe that um, with the wind uh, 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 playing the havoc it is playing people will see smoke in various areas at various times. But here on the disposal site, I can tell you it's much calmer than it appears in some of the communities. We'll have more details in Primetime News at 7. At least six parishes in Jamaica are now experiencing drought conditions. Director of the Med Service of Jamaica, Evan Thompson, says this is expected to continue for a period. Mr. Thompson was speaking at the weekly post cabinet press briefing on Wednesday. Herman Green reports. In October 2023, rainfall levels were just above 80% normal. In November and December, the rainfall levels were much higher. However, there was a dip in January of this year. That is when the very dry conditions started to set in. Drought conditions were gradually um, being experienced moving into February. And I have given some information here about March. Really, this is an, an, a preliminary figure, just about 50% um, of normal. And that is because we've been um, collecting some of the, our automatic weather station data to give us an idea of what is being experienced. But the full sum picture will be unraveled a little bit later this month. Director of the Med Services of Jamaica, Evan Thompson, says six parishes are now experiencing drought conditions. These are Westmoreland, Hanover, St. Elizabeth, Clarendon, Portland and St. Mary. SPI is a standardized precipitation in the index and this gives an idea of what kind of dryness we experience across the island. Um, the shades show moving from exceptionally dry conditions to exceptionally wet conditions, which we did not experience during that period of January to February. Drought is, is assessed over a period of two months. That's why we have January and February here. Um, and that assessment showed that much of the dryness that we experienced was concentrated in the western part of the island. So based on the level of rainfall experienced during March, the drought conditions are expected to have been exacerbated because we saw no appreciable rainfall during March based on the preliminary data that we have collected. But Mr. Thompson says the rainfall outlook for April, May and June is likely to improve. However, it won't be by much. It probably will not set in immediately because we are in the month of April and as we see in this forecast here or the outlook, it shows that the western part of the island will continue to experience quite a bit of dryness, even more so than the rest of the country. Others will gradually start to see the rainfall coming in and we expect it to become above normal. But this might happen more toward the end of this period. This is in May, in June, when we expect the secondary rainfall peak to occur across the country. So that's the outlook. Western parishes um, of Hanover and Westmoreland showing just 40 to 50 percent likelihood of that continued drying trend. Herman Green, TVJ News. Still at Post Cabinet, Managing Director of the Water Resources Authority, Peter Clark, says despite the drought conditions, they are not seeing any major impact on groundwater reserves, but they are concerned about some of the rivers that are now drying up. What we are noticing is that definitely there are lower flows in February 
right now than there were in the month before January. So we're looking here at the Plant and Garden River, and I've selected a few rivers across the island. So with regards to the Plant and Garden River, for last month, it, was, it had a flow of 102 million gallons per day. And in February right now, it has 24 million gallons per day. Last year, this time, it was 5.7 million gallons. And that, that corresponds to what Mr. Thompson was saying. The Jamaica Agricultural Society, JAS, is calling on the government to invest more in the sector. JAS President Lenworth Fulton says that this can further grow Jamaica's gross domestic product, GDP. Mr. Fulton was speaking on TVJ Smart Jamaica this morning. More from Raquel Porter. In 2022, the Jamaica Agricultural Society, GAS, declared that it gets $146 million in loan for the sector. The sector also contributes some 8% to the gross domestic product, GDP. Despite this, GAS President Lenworth Fulton says the government is not doing all it can to help the sector grow further. Government put some money into agriculture, but... Um they are trying their best, but it, the word plenty is stretching it a little bit. Mm. So do we need much more investment in agriculture. The investment is very low, and that has a serious effect on our ability to modernize the farms and to use adaptable technology to produce more and to be competitive. He says... Other areas, like tourism, are given more attention despite 22% of labor force being in agriculture. Mr. Fulton also argues that with the sector supporting 250,000 farmers and some 600,000 families, more investments need to be made. I would like to say to the minister and the prime minister, if you give us more investment in agriculture, we will grow the GDP even further. The 273 million U.S. that we earn in 2022, in seven years we can put that figure to a billion dollar. And that is what I would like them to look on. How much U.S. dollar could we earn? You see, never everybody talking now that they are shopping online. Shopping online means that we have to earn the U.S. dollar here, you know. It's a new U.S. dollar demand line you are talking about. Raquel Porter. TVJ News. Reactions this afternoon to the 48-hour curfew that was imposed in Vineyard St. Elizabeth on Monday. While residents welcome the security forces, some believe a more long-term measure is needed to control the bloodletting in the area. Kalisha Williams has that story. Over the past few weeks, there has been a series of shooting incidents and at least one murder in Vineyard St. Elizabeth. On Monday, the authorities responded with a 48-hour curfew, which ends today. Inspector Alphonse Tyndale is the commanding officer for the St. Elizabeth Police Division. And the reason for this curfew is to limit the movements of criminal elements within the space and to reassure the residents that we are, um, the police is on top of things and to assure them that we will do whatever in our powers to put this area to some form of sanity. And since the curfew was imposed... The presence of the police didn't make sense. You understand? And that should have gone long, 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 long time. Then too late. You understand? Too late. And a long time sits and cry. And nothing done. You see it gone through the gate, you know? Hard to control. Uh, when them there, I feel more comfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, the police now go see and just... Zoom. Just going to shoot you, so if the gunman will just see and shoot you. So, you know, so in them, in them, them the boat, I'm gonna feel very broad and nice. And while the police say their presence in the area has made a difference since Monday, there are heightened concerns that a more long term approach to crime fighting is needed in the space. I, I think it's, 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 it's maybe. You know, just just a, just a measure of making someone feel like they have done something. But I don't think it will be effective for long term. It is happening too often for us to really think that the um, lockdown will be something that will be effective. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return.
Welcome back to the Midday News. There is growing concern that enough is not being done to address Jamaica's rising road fatality rate. Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council, Dr. Lucian Jones, was speaking on TVJ Smart Jamaica program Wednesday. Amoy Harriot reports. Vehicular crashes is the second leading cause of violent death in Jamaica, right behind murder. The country has spent millions in its fight against crime, but how much is being done to tackle road fatalities? It's a huge problem and we're not taking it as seriously as we should. As at April 5, 112 people were killed in road crashes across Jamaica. Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council, Dr. Lucian Jones, is mostly concerned about male motorists between the ages of 18 and 39. About 25% of people fairly high, reported that they had not gone to the depot to get a license. They had gotten from another reason. So people are making poor decisions because they're driving under the influence of alcohol. Mm. You, you know about special, woman and alcohol now. People are making poor decisions because they're driving under the influence of ganja. They are texting and driving. And they are making this decision because they believe they will not get caught. So the big challenge for us now really is to try and get into these young men's, primarily young men, heads. But that's not all. There were a crew called No Headlight Crew. So to be initiated into your, into your gang, you have to take off headlight and drive at night. It's madness. He says his organization is pushing for authorities to install more street cameras to detect speed infractions, among other solutions. But getting assistance from local agencies has been a struggle. For example, the police went around the entire island identifying those spots that you spoke about, mm -hmm. where you have poor markings, where you have potholes, where the sand is not sufficient. And we approach National Works Agency. Until this day, we can't get them to act. Their answer, they don't have any money. Yes, they don't have any money, but you need to find the money because these things are urgent. For now, the NRSC is focusing on establishing an island-wide road safety program. We have a new program joint partnership with Jamaica National, uh, funded by a global charity, 750,000 euros, to create a national helmet wearing coalition where we get young um, motorcycle riders to, to drive um, more carefully and to put on helmets. So part of the program is to create an island-wide program, which is much better than what you have now. Amoy Harriet for TVJ News. It's now time for the Business Minute. The Bank of Jamaica yesterday pumped 30 million U.S. dollars into the foreign currency market. Four banks and two cambios were successful in their bid. VM Building Society, Citibank Jamaica and Maybury Investments received the largest shares of some on offer. After the intervention, the Jamaican dollar gained 14 cents against the U.S. currency. Banks and cambios are selling the American dollar for an average $155.74. The Canadian dollar is being sold for $115.03. $194.78 is the average value of the pound, while the euro will go for $171.61. Further afield, the price of a postage stamp could rise again in the next few months. The U.S. Postal Service filed a notice with the Postal Regulatory Commission on Tuesday. The post office is recommending raising the price of a first-class mail for river stamps from 68 cents to 73 cents. Stamp prices already increased this year in January. If the change is approved, it would take effect on a July 14th. The Postal Service also recommended price adjustments for special service products including certified mail and money order fees. However, there will be no price increase for post office box rental fees. The Commission will still have to review and be in favor of the changes before they can go into effect. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Nakinski Robinson. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at cataracts. Awesome. When I got up on, on Tuesday, surgery was on Monday. When I got up on Tuesday morning, I forgot that I did surgery. Everything was just pretty. Everything was bright, no pain, no problem. You know, so I'm just giving thanks, man. This program is awesome. What do you think would have been the cause of the cataract? The sun. I think it's overexposure to the sun. And I tend to do a lot of um, outdoor. 
So the dust and all of that and then not proper eye care. I mean, lots of persons are not aware how important your eyes are and cleaning those eyes are. You know, you wash your face, but guess what? Your eyes are still dirty. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And now for today's healthy living tip. Wear sunglasses. Get regular eye checkups. Check and manage your blood sugar. And protect yourself from eye trauma. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, former oil minister of Venezuela Tarek L. A. Sami has been arrested on charges that include treason, money laundering and criminal association. A. Sami resigned unexpectedly last year during a corruption probe that alleged he was involved in a scheme through which hundreds of millions of dollars in oil proceeds seemingly disappeared. The country's attorney general released images of a Sami being handcuffed and walking down a hallway flanked by officers. For the overseas, Tennessee's state senate in the U.S. on Tuesday voted to pass a bill that would allow teachers and other school staff to carry licensed guns to schools. The measure passed in a 26-5 vote, despite a group of around 200 gun reform advocates storming the Senate gallery in protest to show their opposition to the move. The bill requires teachers to go through a week-long course, be approved by a county sheriff's office, get a psychological test, do annual training and get their principal's approval. And Ireland's parliament has officially elected 37-year-old Simon Harris as its new prime minister, the youngest person to ever serve in that role. Harris replaces Leo Varadkar, who suddenly stepped down from office last month. 88 lawmakers voted in favor of Harris, while 69 voted against. He previously held the position of minister for higher education. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Amoy Harry. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jordan Ford.